We got the token and all that information when signing up and signing in. Obviously, we want to store this to be able, in the future, to also access resources on our server which are protected. To store that token, I will now go into my reducers folder and create a new reducer file of JS. There, I want to handle all these off actions and my off state. For that, I'll first of all import all my action types here from the actions folder and there from action types because I need them in my switch case statement. And then I will create my reducer function as always receiving the state and the action. I will export this as the default of this file. I'll also set up an initial state. So initial state should be a JavaScript object. And there in this JavaScript object, I want to have my token, which is null initially. I want to also maybe store my user ID, which is null initially. We can also store an error here, initially null, and maybe also loading, which is false. Now in my reducer, I'll add this switch case statement. I'll switch the action type. And there I'll check my cases now. The first case is action types of start. And in there, I just want to return my state. And now we can of course use our utility function to update an object. So I'll import that here too. I'll import update object from the utility file to return the updated state with update object, pass in the old state and update only the error, set it to null again in case it changed and loading, set it to true here because we just started loading here, obviously. We also need to set up a default case already to get rid of this IDE error. There I will just return my state like this. Now we optimized all the other reducers to have lean switch case statements. So let's do this here too. I'll create a new function here, which I'll name off start, where I get state and action and where I simply want to return this code here. So return my updated state object so that it, for this case here, I can just call off start, return it to be precise because I still need to return a state here in my reducer, off start and pass on state and action. Now I'll add another function to my off reducer, off success. Here we also expect state and action of course. And there I will also return an updated object so I'll call update object here and return it for my state. Now what needs to change on a state in a success case? In a success case, I want to set the token and user ID and error and loading, so everything. So in a success case, I'll set token to let's say action ID token. I expect to get this property on my action. User ID to action user ID, I also expect to get this. Error to null and loading to false because we're done. Now I'll also create another function of fail. There I also receive state and action. And here I will return update object state. And here I will then set error to action error, which I expect to get and still loading to false, of course. Now these two actions, of course, need to be handled with cases. So let's add a case action types of success, oops, of success. Here I want to return the result of of success function I just created, pass on state and action, of course, and case action types of fail. Here I want to return the result of my off fail function where I also pass state and action. So these are the two functions I just created. With that, I got a nice off reducer, which should be able to do something with my data. Now, of course, I want to combine it with my other reducers. So in my main index.js file, 
I'll import the off reducer from dot slash store reducers off like this and add it to combine reducers on the off domain. So on a property named off. With that, we add it to our global root reducer. We won't get all the information we want though. ID token, user ID, I extract all of that from the action. Right now, if we have a look at our action here, we're not really passing on that data. So let's inspect the response we get back to see how we extract the data we want to pass on to off success and so on. So let's go back to our application and reload it and get this error because in the reducer for authentication, I forgot one important thing. The state, of course, has to be set to the initial state. Otherwise, it's undefined at the beginning. So now with that, it's working again. And let's now try to sign in. Sign in because this email address is already taken. There we get back a response. And now here we see we got the local ID, which is the user ID. And we get the ID token. That's also interesting to me. So these are the two things I'll save. I'll not save the refresh token. So refreshing the token won't be possible here. This is something you would have to do if you want to ensure that tokens don't expire after one hour. In my app, people will need to log in again after one hour. So to save that data on local ID and ID token, I get that in my off file in the actions folder here where we post our authentication request and get back a response. In response data, we have the ID token and local ID field. And I need to pass this on to off success because off success then needs to pass it on by passing on, let's say the token. So I expect to get my token and the user ID here so that I can pass on token and user ID as props, which I then try to extract in my reducer. There I try to extract token, ID token and user ID. So it's ID token. Let's rename it to that in our auth action file. It should be a property named ID token. And for the error, it's named error. That is already what I try to extract. So that will work. With that, we need to go back to the auth file here. And I do expect to get my token and user ID in the auth success function. That of course means that when I dispatch this function here in the success case, I need to pass it on. So I need to pass on response data and then it was called ID token and as a second argument response data and the user ID was stored in a local ID property. And you can always verify this in the console log ID token and local ID. With that, I'm saving that data. And now let's see if this works. Let's send this data one more time, switch to sign in, go to Redux and hit Submit and on success, if we now inspect the state, we see that in off, we indeed have the token and we have the user ID here stored. So that worked all. With that, we're storing the authentication status. What we're not doing is we're not showing a spinner whilst we are authenticating. Let's add this as well as error handling before we then continue and make use of that token when trying to access resources we otherwise would not be able to access. 